Now, before we uh, move on to our studio discussion, uh, Channel News Asia Simon Marks is standing by with uh, Nina Vargas in Washington, D.C. Simon? I am indeed, Timothy. Uh, we'll be going to Nina and her guests in just a few moments. But first of all, I want to take you live to the Biltmore Hotel in Arizona, uh, in the city of Phoenix. That is where uh, John McCain is watching the uh, results of this American election come in. That is where he will be uh, seen a little bit later on this evening. He was obviously hoping to make a victory speech the way things are currently trending. He may have to concede defeat. My colleague Malcolm Brown is at the Biltmore Hotel and I hope joins us now live from Phoenix and Malcolm I wonder what the mood must be like there this evening well I have to say a colleague of mine just described it I think quite accurately as something of the parallel dimension uh, as far as you would uh, tell from looking at this hall they, they might still pull this off despite the growing evidence to the contrary out in the country at large that said, some pessimistic tone is starting to creep into the conversation here. Senator John Kyle, a senior Republican in the U.S. Senate and a fellow Arizonan of John McCain's, uh, a close friend and part of this campaign, spoke just moments ago. And he seemed to be talking about this campaign somewhat in the past tense. Uh, he started quoting biblical scripture. Uh, saying of John McCain, regardless of the outcome, think of John McCain that he has fought a good fight. Uh, and then he started looking forward uh, to what he predicted would be a liberal majority in uh, Washington. And he tried to rally the troops uh, here, the Republican faithful, to fight against that expected uh, Democratic majority. He said, we are going to have to be a firewall against this radical leftist agenda. So certainly that seemed to concede implicitly at the very least. Uh, that things may not be looking that good, Simon. But Malcolm, we were saying earlier in the evening that uh, uh, John McCain really had to perform the uh, political equivalent of a royal flush in order to win the keys to the Oval Office. So far, things, uh, as far as the electoral map are concerned, do not appear to be going his way. Uh, is anyone from the McC McCain camp there uh, offering reporters on the ground uh, any indication for how they think he actually could win? No, not really. And that, this is to some extent a problem with the format, uh, uh, the way this layout is. Well, the way this works is that you have the traveling press uh, have better access to the candidate. Uh, and there is a separate stage from which John McCain was hoping to make his acceptance speech, but which may now be a concession speech. Uh, and the traveling press have access to that area as well as select Republican donors and supporters. Uh, the area I'm talking to you from uh, is this kind of a spin-off room where the rest of the world and the American press are gathered. Uh, and uh, like I said, my, my colleague from an uh, American newspaper website described it as a parallel universe, and it does have some of that feeling. You're somewhat insulated from what's going out in the rest of the country, uh, and you can hear country music being played, various performers coming out, so the mood is as surprisingly upbeat, given the drumbeat of bad news coming in from the outside side. More from Malcolm as the evening wears on at the Biltmore Hotel there uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Our colleague Nathan King is at what I suspect is going to end up being a slightly happier event uh, in uh, uh, Chicago where Barack Obama uh, is gathered. Before we go to Nathan, I just want to let you know that at least one television network uh, here in the United States is now projecting Barack Obama the winner in the Commonwealth of Virginia, just down the road from us here in Washington, D.C., projecting a very narrow result, 50% uh, uh, Obama, 49% McCain, but they're projecting Obama the winner in Virginia nonetheless. That's going to have a big impact potentially in the next few minutes. But let's go first uh, to Chicago, uh, to Grant Park, where Barack Obama's supporters are gathered. Uh, we have been charting uh, their mood as good news has come in about Barack Obama's prospects uh, in this battle for the election. And as you know, my friend and colleague, Nathan King, is there. This was the one that really mattered. Ohio, it's 20 electoral college votes, but it's not just the votes. No Republican has got to the White House in living memory without winning Ohio. It's another 20 in Barack Obama's column. It takes him closer ever to the 270 electoral college votes needed. And it shows the sorts of voters that he's winning 
that John Kerry did not win before and that McCain is losing the types of voters that President George Bush won handily in 2000 and 2004. It's too early to talk about a landslide here, but there is a momentum building uh, towards one. It basically feels that Obama is safe. He will be, it looks like, from the projections, the next President of the United States. But definitely a landslide is still on the cards. Nathan King, Channel News Asia, Chicago. Right, so let's get caught up on some of these results. Let's start, uh, first of all, by taking a look at that uh, projection from the state of Virginia. Let's take a look at the latest numbers uh, that we have in from the Commonwealth of Virginia, just down the road from us here in Washington, D.C. There you see it, Barack Obama, 50%, John McCain, 49%, the narrowest of margins. That's with 87% of real votes counted, according to our broadcast partners, MSNBC. But as I say, some television networks here now say... They are confident that Barack Obama has won Virginia, uh, and that may uh, be another sizable nail in uh, John McCain's coffin. Let's move on. The state of Ohio, as you know, uh, already that was uh, declared uh, a victory for Barack Obama. There you see the latest numbers, 51% Obama, 47% McCain, with 42% of precincts reporting. Uh, let's go on to the sunshine state of Florida, all important back in the year 2000. A real tussle underway there as well. Between Barack Obama, 51% of the vote, John McCain, 48% of the vote. The television networks here have not yet... Uh, projected the outcome in Florida, and I want to wrap up with the state of Missouri. Let's uh, put those numbers uh, up on the screen if we can. Here they come. Big fight going on in the state of Missouri. Barack Obama, 48%. McCain, just with the edge, 51%, but that's after about a third of the vote has been counted there uh, in the state of Missouri. Again, those numbers coming to us from MSNBC. So, Further evidence in the last few minutes that this election may be swinging Barack Obama's way. A reminder that this is not just an election uh, about the presidency. This is also an election about the future of the U.S. Congress. One third of the U.S. Senate up for grabs. The entire House of Representatives up for grabs today. My colleague back in the newsroom, Ollie Barrett, is charting those congressional races. And Ollie, it's been a pretty bad night to be a Republican. Simon, it, it really has. Uh, John McCain and the Republican uh, campaign team were warning in, in the final few days of the campaign about the idea of a liberal left-wing dictatorship taking over Washington. It doesn't seem that voters have heeded those warnings or paid any attention to them at all. Uh, we, have, uh, we know that at least four uh, Republican Senate seats have been taken by the Democrats. They will uh, tighten their control on the Senate. Uh, their ma Democratic majority in the House of Representatives has increased as well. And we, we know now that the, uh, the, the governorship of Missouri has also gone to a Democrat. So this is really a bad night for Republicans uh, all across the board, Simon. And Ollie, we heard there from, uh, from Malcolm out in Phoenix that uh, some Republicans are already talking about the need to circle the wagons and prepare to fight uh, what they characterize as a hard left agenda. I'm not sure it's what you or I with our European backgrounds would characterize as a hard left agenda, but in American political terms, that's how they choose to characterize it. Uh, I mean, that sets the, the stage for some pretty heated uh, warfare potentially up there on Capitol Hill. It absolutely does. Uh, but at the same time, if Barack Obama, I guess, uh, secures a sizable mandate from the American people and uh, that mandate is extended to Capitol Hill in Washington, then there are some moderate Republicans as well in the Senate who are going to look pretty bad to their electorate back home in their own states if they don't go along with uh, a Democratic president and a Democratic Senate who've been elected so handily. So it could go either way. Um, I, I think there's a, a strong chance that certainly in the, the opening months uh, of a Democratic uh, presidency possibly uh, and majority in the Senate that we could see some cooperation as a result of all this. All right, Ollie Barrett monitoring the congressional races. More from Ollie uh, a little bit later on in the evening. That's the latest news from here, but we have a panel of guests with us, as you know, interpreting uh, the outcome of this election uniquely for our audience across Asia and asking questions of them uniquely is my colleague Nina Burgess.